uh, uh, welcome to the webinar. Uh, before uh, the opening by our president, uh, I will welcome all of you to join the webinar. Uh, the webinar is hosted by uh, Taiwan Interventional uh, Beer Penguins uh, uh, Endoscopes uh, Club, and the uh, and also hosted by uh, Crystal View uh, Company, and uh, assisted by the uh, MI Tech uh, Company. So uh, let's welcome our president Zhang to uh, opening. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. And welcome to join this webinar meeting today. Especially, we are very happy we can invite our good friend, uh, Professor Ronson from Tenan, to make a speech for us. Uh, Professor Ronson, he went to Taiwan many times before this pandemic situation. Uh, Professor Wang will introduce him later. Uh, I have to say thanks to uh, Professor Wang. He organized this meeting. Uh, I also have to say thanks to Crystal uh, yeah, company that has supported this uh, meeting. Uh, today our uh, topic is uh, a breakthrough of the challenges in endoscopic procedure. I think it is very uh, critical topic, very hot topic, topic so I can everybody can learn a lot today. Uh, thanks for your for your joining this meeting, uh, Doctor Professor Wang. I can moderate this meeting now. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks, uh, Professor. Uh, thanks, uh, President Zhang. Uh, I will introduce our stream guest today, uh, my good friend, Professor Ronson. I think everybody know him. Today he will give us a uh, talk about the uh, what should be the new design metallic standard. Answer is multi hole stand. And before his speech, I will introduce him. Uh, Professor uh, Ronson is graduated from Sharangong University, a very famous uh, uh, university. And uh, he obtained the American Board of Internal Medicine from Ross Medical College in Chicago in 1996. Later, he uh, pursues the, his gastroenterology fellowship. In, from Louisiana State University in New Orleans. Uh, before he returned to Thailand, uh, he attended the ERCV fellowship from Indiana University. Uh, and now he is a professor of medicine, chief division gastroenterology, and the director of Center Excellence for Innovation and Endoscope in GI Oncology. Uh, he's, uh, belong to Chalangong University, Bengal, Thailand. And uh, he also is a founding member of past president of Thailand Association of GI Endoscope. And uh, also uh, he is, uh, now he is the deputy uh, uh, president of the, uh, his, uh, uh, his department and uh, he he's interested in actually I don't know it's a, a, a GI cancer screening especially in colonoscope but in the world he is very famous in ERCP procedure and the biliary pancreas is older he organized many consensus uh, including very famous uh, cholangio carcinoma and the others uh, consensus cooperate with the many country so today he will give a talk about the uh, stand. Uh, Professor Ansan, please. Ni hao. Uh, many <laughs> thanks, uh, Professor Super Wang, Professor Chang, uh, and my tech team, and the rest of me to join the talk uh, today. Let me share my screen. So, can you see my screen now? Yeah. Okay, is that good? Okay. So, my subject today. I think we all know a lot about the metric stand already, but uh, somehow I think we'll, uh, doing this talk, I will show you there's still some, uh, you know, the uh, problem with those uh, available stand in the market right now, but uh, see what we can make it into the probably most appropriate or the best uh, stand for many of us. Okay, first, Metric stand first is always, you know, in, in, in my 
uh, university now, I always use uh, metric stand almost. Uh, only a few I still use uh, plastic stand in terms of the stone that I cannot uh, remove uh, all of those because interestingly in my country the metric stand can get reimbursed uh, for whatever indication uh, with the certain amount of uh, cost. Luckily, majority of those then uh, you know uh, patient uh, do not have to pay from their own pocket. Even some of those special ones they pay just a little bit more. So that's, that's something that uh, we, we, we can use it more. Uh, let's see the difference between the two stents. Uh, the left hand is the metric stent, as you see, and right hand is plastic stent. Generally, the radius is the key factor because uh, by looking at this, the radius of general Billy stent is about five millimeter. On the other hand, of the plastic stent is about two millimeter. As you can see from this formula, that uh, talking about the flow rate is depend on the pressure radius fluid viscosity and main different is the radius because it goes uh, by the uh, forward power. You can see that the flow of distance could be more than you know the twenty times or even eighty times in certain different of radius uh, between the two stand plastic and the metallic one. Let's talk a little bit more about the uh, cause of plastic stent obstruction. As you can see from this multiple figure and uh, confirmed by the electron microscope, uh, there are three culprits that can cause obstruction, debris, slush, and biofilm. All I mean, uh, by the, you know, the, uh, the commonest is the debris followed by the slush. But generally all these started from a uh, biofilm and then uh, that made usually by the gram positive bacteria and those slugs and uh, the things came after the by being digested by the bacteria. As you know that there's a lot of chances to have migration in the plastic stent. So this may affect the stent pendency as you see in this figure. So how to improve the plastic stent pendency? Uh, many idea. First is to make it as the self-expandable stent like the metric one. And with this, uh, to forget about re the removal, you can do the bio absorbable plastic one. Or if you want to use the same old uh, conventional uh, plastic stent, you have to combine the advantage of both straight and pigtail tight stent. And some idea of design by putting the special coating agent to prevent the bacterial biofilm formation by putting some substance that can prevent surface irregularity that caused by biofilm itself. On the other hand, the idea is to make a bigger channel, uh, do a nanoscope, but two millimeter. To my opinion, this is probably will be very difficult because the appropriate di diameter should be about eight millimeter. And I don't see that in the future, uh, any scope can accommodate this size of uh, you know, the working channel. Lastly, practically without doing anything, just put more than one plastic stand. Many of experts have done that and show some good results. So let's talk back about the self-expandable metal stand. As I mentioned, because of its larger diameter and also in those uncovered stand, it can provide subsegmental drainage through the mesh. And with this longer pendency, patient develop lower rate of post-ERCP cholangitis. And certain patients with some tumor you know, invading to the biduct, this compression effect from the metric stent can stop bleeding uh, that can cause as hemobilia. A few years ago, I think one of our team uh, and also uh, Professor Alan Bakun have done a meta-analysis comparing between the efficacy of plastic versus cell expandable metric stent in terms of treating or palliation malignant bleed obstruction. And they found that the metric stent is better in terms of the time to patency time about 4.45 months, and there were no differences in overall patient survival and no difference in 30-day mortality as well. So the benefit in terms of detail, there was a higher symptom-free period at six months in four study, and metric stent use resulted in lower rate of late complication in the term of sepsis and cholangitis. And because of this result to low rate of blocking from slash, uh, as you can see in the uh, next few slides. And this is result in the lower rate of mean number of pre-intervention 
in a study. So in our all, the favor is falling to metal extent, especially for landmark studies showing that the stent penancy uh, were much longer in those who underwent metal extent uh, insertion. So next subject is the question, because this day, either we use cover or uncovered self metric stent for malignant uh, Billy structure. In general, you can imagine that in the cover stent, the most difficult problem that you see is migration, either downward or upward. Certain uh, condition may develop like occlusion, pancreatic orifice causing pancreatitis, occlusion cystic duct, uh, orifice causing uh, uh, polycystitis. But many experts said that sometimes they don't think it's different between the two stents, between uncover and cover stent. So generally the primary outcome is for the uh, stent failure and patient mortality did not differ significantly between cover and uncover stent with the hazard ratio of 0 0.68 with a good con uh, uh, confident interval CI of 0 0.4 to 1.17. Stent migration and select formation were much more common with cover stent with odd ratio of 5.11. And the use of cover metric stent was associated with a lower rate of tumor ingrowth, as you can imagine. And also, as we believe, because of the length of stent, sometimes we have something called tumor overgrowth. And I would say this tumor overgrowth can develop uh, in uh, both types of stent, but in this meta analysis showing that uh, the uh, rate of uh, tumor overgrowth was more in uh, cover stent. These are the reason, I don't know why. And uh, personally related, even as I mentioned, in terms of pancreatitis, bleeding, or polycystitis, uh, there were no difference between the two stent. Uh, talking about what happened when you see the metric stent became obstructed, we published earlier 10 years ago uh, in terms of what to do. Uh, and the group that we show in this slide is the patient with extra hepatic duct obstruction, usually bismuth one. PS represents plastic stent. This is percutaneous bleed drainage. This is metric stent. As you can see from here, the medial survival were much longer in the patient who underwent uh, metric stent. And also the time uh, for second drainage was shortest in the plastic stent, as you can see in this uh, uh, landmere analysis in terms of cumulative survival here. So, I mean, if you think patient can live long and usually as the endoscopists are very optimistic, I would say better put the second stent as metric stent uh, in those who got obstructed metric stent. Let's talk about the risk of RBO, recurrent bleed obstruction and complication other than that. I split in two uh, main factors. One is stent related factor and second is patient factor. In terms of stent factor, as I mentioned, uncover, you're facing ingrowth. And sometimes it's not tumor ingrowth, it's just uh, ingrowth by the tissue reaction because the stent is impinging the ball of the bile duct. And sometimes uh, you can see with partially covered type, but generally it's the only top part or distal part. The patient can have tumor overgrowth in both types of the stent as I showed you earlier. And impaction, this is important that eluded by Isiyama from uh, Japan, because he said that the stent with high axial force with poor uh, conformability, it means that it cannot bend easily. It's very straight and stiff. You can see impaction. Because sometimes bile duct is not straight like esophagus. Sometimes it's more like small bowel. So the top or this whole part of stent may impinge or get kinking and it get blocked without causing uh, tumor ingrowth or overgrowth in this uh, 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 you know, part. And food impaction because of uh, the placement across the papilla. So there's some leaf lock of content inside the bile duct. So talking about the patient factor, we see that malignant structure cause more problems in terms of ingrowth and overgrowth compared to benign structure. As I mentioned earlier, if you play the stand in very angulated bile duct or even the normal structure that is in the high lung, the problem with the high axial force stand may have blockage easily because of it cannot uh, you know, accommodate the angle of these people. So this thing usually 
we never know until we perform cryogram, and then you have to decide what type or what length of stent you uh, want to put. Patient with low motility of digestive tract, let's say a patient with gastroparesis, patient with uh, small bowel pseudo obstruction, may have higher risk of food impaction or leaf flow into the belly stent. Talking about food impaction, uh, the earlier study uh, showing that the partially covered stent had more food impaction than the fully covered stent. And again, stent factor are a regular inner surface, the placement across the ampullar, the stent was a small diameter, and those with uncovered had more problem than the cover, as I showed you earlier. And the special stent, if you have the stent have anti-reflux system, that could be helpful. The pa uh, patient factor, you can imagine, patient with there is no invasion, they may have uh, uh, somewhat uh, uh, physiologically you know, obstruction, and those who got obstruction, but even they have metric stent, the flow of food may go downstream slowly, and these food can reflux back to the inner belly stent. Talking about migration, this is the weakest point of cover stent these days, although there's no grease of tissue in growth or, uh, because of the good axial force. So the overall stent migration uncover usually nearly 0% compared to fully covered stent that develop about three to even higher, 15%, one five. And these are the risk factor for stent migration. Stent factor, as I mentioned, cover type. And interestingly, the stent, low radial force mean that it cannot impinge on the wall of the duct very well, less than four Newton, or with high axial force stronger than 0.4 Newton may cause the risk of stent migration. As I mentioned, anti-migratory system is helpful to prevent migration, of course. Patient factor, you see, uh, you know, migration because benign structures tend to respond to the uh, radio expand size sport of stent and later, it will migrate. But in this case, I do not worry about it. It means that your job has been done by completely open up the structure. But on the other hand, if you choose the stent that have the diameter smaller than the structure, it may cause loose structure and cause migration. Some of tumor may respond well to chemotherapy. Again, I do not worry about that because it means the patient response stent may need to be, may not need to be there longer. And also do not tumor invasion, as I mentioned earlier. So it's come to the question, can we decide the better stand by taking all advantages of cover and uncovered stand and try to dismiss all the disadvantages of both types then have a better design. So let's come with the multi-hole stand. As you can see in this figure, this is a hybrid. The whole then is being covered by the membrane. However, each of the interstitials, you can see the small hole in each of them. When, when we place it, you can, it's, it's gonna be appearing like this. The concept is not to having high risk of migration. This small hole can allow some tissue to go in and fix the stent in. On the other hand, by thinking about not occluding subsegmental drainage, or blocking the cystic duct. This hole can allow the, you know, drainage uh, through this, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, hole in between the interstitials. So we think that it can be useful in high obstruction because as I, I forgot to tell you that usually cover stand is prohibited to be used in high obstruction or even in the uh, pancreatic duct because of the fear of closing side branches or subsequental drainage of the intrahepatic duct. So we reported uh, uh, in DDW a couple of years ago. Now the number has come up to almost uh, uh, 32, I believe. But as you can see that the efficacy of multi-hole stent versus fully covered mystic stent in patient with unresectable malignant disability obstruction. This is a prospective cohort study with propensity score matching because uh, difficult to recruit patients these days, especially during the uh, COVID pandemic. But somehow I can show that the general demographic data are almost quite similar. Majority of the patient were the patient with pancreatic cancer and followed by the patient with bilateral cancer. And the rest that you can see that 
uh, there was some half of them because of this is unresectable patient. Uh, they had liver metastasis. The critical success was very good uh, in uh, the two group. Almost, I'm sorry, 95% and personally related adverse event with pancreatitis, uh, definitely no different and cholangitis as well. Uh, interestingly, about 10% of them in those with intact gallbladder uh, develop cholecystitis. So the idea of having the whole or uh, without whole by uncovered stent may not be helpful. But as I mentioned, we think the cause of cholecystitis is not because of the membrane alone, but maybe of the uh, you know that changing the relationship of the orifice by the stent. So I would say that we can see the same figure in uncovered stent as well. So talk about the RBO rate. This is interesting. As you can see that because of uh, you know, limited number, uh, so we cannot make the conclusion, but you can see the trend, the trend of uh, these liquidity obstruction is in favor of multi-host then by having five patients, in this case, uh, make it as 25% uh, compared to nine patients, make it up as 49, 45%. Uh, although the uh, step P is still 0 0.19. In detail, if you look at three months, you see that the stent uh, in this group has RBO only one and six months only two compared to this group. And the overall time to recurrent body obstruction median was much longer, almost reached the stat section of significant 375 days compared to 269 days. And the cost of RBO, if you look at detail, uh, symptomatic stent migration, of course, uh, is flowed uh, to the fully covered stent. Three patients contain as 15% developed, and this has became significant. And uh, interestingly, but uh, we see that still tumor in growth developed in our multiple group. So I think this is something that we have to redesign uh, of our multiple stent. Perhaps I think because of there are too many holes, we may not need uh, uh, one hole for each of the interstitials, or the hole could be a little bit too big, so we may spare. I'll talk about that later. And other thing in terms of tumor intro and slash were not different between the two groups. This is the uh, you know graph to show the cumulative stent tendency. As you can see, that the green one is the uh, multi-hole stent compared to the fully covered stent, the multiple stent performed much better than the fully covered stent. And with this, uh, if you heard about video frequency ablation as a treatment for tumor in growth in the uncovered stent, we could uh, do similar way. And I think it's better because the uncovered stent sometimes when we use IF ablation, because it's a bipolar system, you can have uh, or you develop short circuit by having the ineffective ablation too soon before you're able to ablate the tissue in growth. But because of the membrane prevent uh, your probe to connect to the mesh that become electrode. So you can burn it longer in multi-host than in our experience. And this is part by uh, Professor Kobayashi from Japan who developed this then I have to congratulate his invention for uh, uh, this type of stent. I uh, just want to show you this patient. Uh, earlier, we thought we can remove the stent. So we put the multi-hole in the patient with uh, recurrent uh, pancreatitis from pancreas divisum. And we tried to remove at four weeks, but it was not possible. And we saw that the stent multi-hole embedded completely with a lot of tissue in growth in the duct. So this is something we scared of at first, but luckily, uh, we think that we can uh, do like uh, esophageal stent removal by placing the second stent as a fully covered cell expandable metric stent inside the stent at the stent in stent technique. And we leave it uh, uh, for some period of time. The idea is to induce creation necrosis of the tissue hyperplasia as uh, the previously reported of the embedded and issue stent and it found to be safe and effectiveness. And uh, on the pancreatitis, they report in about two cases. And uh, uh, I'll show you the result two months later. See that the original fully covering already migrated out. So we took the first stand uh, uh, that the one is inside is supposed to fully cover stand and see the 
big pancreatic uh, proteinase uh, juice came out and uh, see that uh, I think the first generation, the whole was somewhat a uh, bit uh, too big, but it's not difficult for us to remove the uh, stain by the snare and you see the hole. So, I mean, uh, uh, maybe, you know, the, we can place the stand inside and we want to remove, we have to follow by the second stand or if we could decide a stand that can be retrieved uh, easily. So I would say in my opinion at this moment, although we have studied only the extra hepatic bile obstruction at the moment, but the future uses could be the patient with hyla obstruction or used in patient with pancreatic stricture. And I believe that there should be not one side fit all. We have to have the different types, of, uh, to my opinion, at least three types, future design in, type, in terms of type A, B, and C. Depending on the number and size and location of the hole, I would say we should have put more holes if you want to put it in the high lump. So mean, meaning that the proximal part of stent can be more hole just to prevent the subsequent obstruction or those with the pancreatic uh, obstruction we put as the pancreatic duct stent. And we leave type B, if you want to do in, in extra hepatic duct, maybe only a few holes and maybe more in the proximal area just to prevent migration. And uh, in the middle, you can just leave it like partially covered stent by having no hole at all. And type C is this uh, small hole for the nice structure. And this is for potential of future removability. So I think this is the end of my last slide. So I would say that I think uh, self expandable medical scent can save the world. Thank you for your kind attention. Thanks, Rongson. Uh, very, very amazing uh, talk and uh, very detailed. So I think there are <coughs> some questions coming. And the, okay. Uh, Dr. Uh, Zhong Chen has asked you a question. He sure. say, uh, some pancreatic cancer patients have borderline indication for surgery and the near h CCRT is given. Internal bilia drainage bridging to surgery. Do you recommend metal stand instead of plastic stand? If so, what kind of metal, metal stand is the most appropriate? Well, I, I think as uh, I mentioned uh, before, uh, you know, before you perform uh, you know, cholangiogram, usually uh, as per the study, medics and probably perform much better if your surgical time uh, waiting is longer than one month because of the risk of uh, recurrent body obstruction. The plastic stand usually shorter than one month in certain patient. But as soon as you get in uh, to the viaduct, it depends on the anatomy. If this is a straight shot, you can put uh, any metric stand you like. Uh, prefer, I, I prefer this uh, with fully covered stand or multi hole stand. Uh, you don't have to remove it uh, uh, when the patient going to surgery and try to put the shortest one, not to uh, blocking the surgical uh, anastomotic site to the surgeon. But if you put the fully covered stand, you can put the longer one because of they can remove during surgery. So it depends on what situation. For those patients who have uh, very uh, kinking duct, in this case, I would recommend to use the nitinol stand with low, uh, you know, the axial force because of it will not uh, uh, get kink and also come, uh, uh, accommodate the uh, shape of the biduct better. And I believe multi hole stand is a, a good one because they can conform to the uh, abnormal angle of the biduct very well, and you don't have to put the uh, long stand in this uh, purpose. Okay. Uh, oh, it's Nakai, Professor Nakai. Yeah? Oh, and yes. He, <laughs> he has a question for the intervention of multiple uh, metal stand, multi hole uh, metal stand. Can yeah, you remove and exchange the stand easily? Yeah. Uh, usually, uh, we, we don't have too many uh, patients that we need to be removed because those are unrestrictable tumor. But those who need to be removed, uh, I think I have removed a few in the viaduct without doing any additional intervention after uh, one or two month placement. But uh, the case I show you is the one that we cannot uh, remove because we see too much of tissue in growth. 
uh, then we have to put the fully covered stent inside. But as I can show you, within two weeks, uh, the two stent can be removed uh, quite easily. But I would recommend the company to make the special design by putting smaller hole and also a less number of hole for these purposes. So we, we can ensure the, 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 the doctor that uh, they may not have to put the second stand because it's more uh, costly. Okay. Uh, Dr. Ko Yuting, I want to ask you the, your experience about the migration rate of the multi-hole stand in palliation drainage of malignant and benign disease. Zero. Your experience? Zero. Oh. Zero. Zero. None. Just like uh, uncovered stand. Mm -hmm. So that's a good part of it. So I mean, the, my, 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 uh, my, my thing about it, the, this idea that if we can take our advantage of the two stand, uncover, uncover is the best. But mm -hmm. my fear is some disadvantage from uncover, like tumor ingrowth or migration will come. But at least I can see that there's no migration, but there's still some ingrowth. So we have to fix uh, this stand uh, in the next generation. But at this moment, mm -hmm. it can be confirmed that it's probably as good as uncovered stand but somewhat better if you would see the figure, but just because of the number of improvement mm -hmm. high, so we cannot show the uh, statistical significant at this moment yet. Okay, uh, another question from Dr. Sun. Any benefit of the stand to fully cover stand in Margin's show? You mean the benefit of multiple mm -hmm. over fully covered? Yeah, I, I think he, he's, uh, yeah. Okay, as I mentioned, no migration, <laughs> However, uh, as you can see from my <laughs> slide, uh, the length of uh, stand pens time and patient survival is somewhat longer with multi-hole, but because of limited number, I cannot make that conclusion uh, firmly because of there could be type 2 order. Uh, however, uh, I think uh, uh, if you're afraid about migration, I would uh, and don't want uh, to put the uncovered stand and also want to remove it, Multi-hole is the answer. Because uh, uncovered stand is quite difficult to remove if you decide. But if you think this is unresectable, I don't see uh, much of different in terms of the risk of migration between uncovered and multi-hole stand. Mm -hmm. uh, Ronson, can you <coughs> give some comments about the uh, axial force and the radial force of the multi-hole stand compared with other uh, metallic stand? I would say it's quite acceptable uh, in terms of uh, the axle forward that because I can see that the, it, it can accommodate, uh, I mean, we call comfortability uh, better than the original stainless steel stand. Uh, so I would say in those angulated duct, or you want to put in the high lab because it's uh, original, it has to make a turn either left or right. Uh, this is uh, performing much better than the original uh, stand is still stand. So I, 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 I think this, this stand design is as good as other new version of uncovered stand. Okay. I think Chris, Chris have some question, maybe the similar question. Do you have any trouble in Lumi, uh, Lu, uh, removing and replacing the acrylic multiple hole in your stand? In the, in so the see, I believe it's partially covered and uh, fully covered. As I show you that in the bida, I had no problem. Mm. It's easy to remove, but I facing, I was facing one patient as I show in the video in the pancreatic duct that I end up with putting the fully covered stent, but eventually all the stent, uh, I mean two stent came out nicely. But I can show you my experience with uncovered stent that being placed for benign condition, uh, you know, accidentally and. Uh, we still have problem in terms of talk, talk, uh, taking some of those long-term embedded uncovered stand that cannot be removed at all. So I think uh, so far, because of we know beforehand, but only a few patients, but all of those stand that being placed that if you want to remove, I would say in two months, you can remove it. But so, sometimes you need full cover stand to insert as a stand instead to cause uh, tissue in growth necrosis. So Ronson, you remove the multi-hole stand. If you want to remove, you remove yes. in in two months or three months. Uh, no, it depends. But usually I put, uh, for our study, we put only in, as I show you, 50% were 
with liver metastasis to the unresectable one. But somehow, uh, I think uh, not accidentally, we intended to place in the pancreatic duct once that I show you. And there were a couple of patients uh, that the surgeon decided to do operation. So we have to remove the stent. So a few of those, uh, we were able to remove it without any problem, without the need for stent in stent. Okay. And the other question from Dr. Chen is uh, for the uh, cholestitis. And the, he, think, he, he thinks a uh, bigger hole or small hole can the, uh, resolve this problem? Uh, I believe for cholecystitis, it's not depend uh, totally on the membrane because we have seen cholecystitis, even we put uncovered stent or even plastic stent because I think the shape of the, or the opening of uh, cystic duct to the bile duct sometime uh, being distorted by the stretching or uh, radio force of the stent, mm -hmm. not only because of a membrane. And you never know that the area that you have the hole will be placed precisely at the site of the orifice. So I would say that changing the size of the hole or location of the hole may be helpful, except you put the whole circumference without membrane and you place that area uh, to be at the cystic duct. But again, the problem of the cystic duct uh, opening is uh, there's a lot of variation, very low or middle or high up. So I would say that since it's not a factor for membrane alone, so I wouldn't worry about that. In our uh, institution, if you're afraid about the stent causing cholecystitis, we tend to place the double pigtail stand in the gallbladder before we put the metric stand. Okay. Uh, thanks, Ronson, because time is up uh, and a little delay. I think there are another question from Chris and uh, Dr. Wei. Please answer on the chat room, okay? Okay, sure. sure. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank we you. have to proceed to the next uh, uh, speaker. Okay, uh, Dr. Ling.